uh, the energy our guys have had this week, um, you know, I want to say probably uh, the, uh, you know, it's been a long season, a, a big grind. We've been down, I think, you know, so many players at different times during the year. Um, so it, it's been a, it's been a challenge, but I, I, I will say, I think the, uh, the energy level of practice, the highest it's been in quite a while this week. And uh, I think that's just the excitement the guys have the opportunity to go play in this game. Uh, Kyle's had a great week of practice. Uh, you know, I mean, it, uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully he's able to play. Hopefully he's able to get cleared to play on Saturday. All right, Coach, we'll go to Nick De La Torre. Nick, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Nick De La Torre, Gators territory. Uh, I was going to ask about Kyle, but also um, just Jeremiah Moon and, and Sean Davis. How are those guys progressing with their injuries, and will they be available Saturday? Yeah, they're working hard to get back out there, and, and you know, we'll, we'll know on Saturday. Uh, who will be available for us, you know, but uh, uh, those guys have been working hard to try to recover and get back. So, like I said, we've had a lot of guys banged up this year uh, with it being a long season and uh, the, uh, but, you know, that's a, that's a normal thing. You know, I guess this year is probably a little bit different than, than other years with everything going on, but, uh, uh, but that's just where you're at. So, I mean, those guys have been working hard to try to try to get themselves ready for Saturday. In those with questions, you can hit the raise your hand function on your screen, and we'll go back uh, to Cassidy Hill. Cassidy? Hey, Dan. Yeah, I had a follow-up. Uh, you know, usually you hear defensive guys say, we want to make the quarterback beat us with his arm. That sounds like something you don't want to do with Mac Jones. So especially with just some different issues in the secondary, how much more important will it be Saturday night for that front seven, Kyrie, Brenton Cox, to get in there and really just kind of fluster Jones? Well, I think, I think always, I mean, you know, what you don't want to do is let a quarterback, uh, you know, basically play seven on seven. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's, uh, you'll watch, there's a lot of quarterbacks it makes life a little bit easier uh, when no one's touching you. So you up front, uh, it's important to kind of uh, try to change up the looks and, uh, but you got uh, on them on the back end, but you got to get pressure up front uh, to not let them just kind of stand back there with, uh, you know, we can't let them just stand back there and have all day to just kind of take his time, go through every read, get to the, fourth, fifth progressions and reads. Uh, you got to get after the quarterback a little bit, uh, get him out of rhythm if, uh, early in the game. Coach, we'll go back to Steve Moulton and WZZN. Uh, yes, Coach. I, I, we've uh, talked about you facing Coach Saban-led teams for a number of years, but I am curious of just this defense, of just uh, facing a Nick Saban defense. What are some characteristics – that you've seen over the years and maybe how does this defense compare to ones you've already played against in the past coach? I think we haven't played them in a couple of years, three years. So, um, right. I think last time, last time I played them was 2017. Um, I'm trying to think of that defense, but the, uh, I don't know. I, I think generally when you see them, I think they do a really good job. Uh, very, very sound schematically. I think obviously, uh, you know, Nick's an excellent defensive coach. Uh, they have a good scheme. They know, you know, I mean, knows this, know the scheme inside and out. Does a good job of putting players in position, make plays. Uh, gives you multiple looks. You know, change the looks up front uh, with the different fronts. Uh, you know, but being a, a three down and a four down team, uh, you know, uh, he has uh, several different nickel and dime blitz packages that they put together that cause you great challenges back there. And then obviously they always have a ton of talented guys. Uh, you know, and they got talent on every level, you know, talent in the front linebacker and, and on the secondary, um, you know, so, I mean, you just, when every, every time you're going to play them, I mean, it's always a, a great challenge when you play them defensively. And if you have a question, use the raise the hand function. We'll go back now to uh, Gene Fournette. Gene. Uh, yeah, Dan, you were the one that, uh, uh, told us early on in the season how much you, you felt offenses would be ahead of defenses uh, this year in the SEC. When you look at Alabama's defense this year, uh, how different is that defense from what you've seen on tape, let's say September, maybe early October, versus the defense that you see now? Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I, I think I was, I was pretty right on uh, early yeah. season. I think everybody sees that now, that, uh, that you're pretty right on with it. Um, but it is. I think, you know, you're looking at guys that are just more into football mode. They're more comfortable with what's going on. They're, they're comfortable with the schemes, all the different pattern reads that they do, putting themselves in position. And then, uh, you know, the big one is guys being comfortable tackling uh, where you probably didn't, you know, you didn't get as much of that as you normally would. And now you kind of get yourself into game mode. So I think they're playing at a much higher level now than they did earlier in the year. 
Coach, we'll go next to Mark Long. Mark, go ahead. Again, yeah, listening to your players this week, it's been pretty clear that you guys have them understanding the importance of this game. Has that been a really a big point of emphasis a week was to get them to you know, maybe refocus and understand that, hey, even though some things may not be dangling there, there's still – this game is absolutely huge in terms of uh, career projection, all that stuff. Well, I think this game is such a big game. You know, I haven't played in it before. Um, you know, I think you realize that the stage that it's on and the scene that it is uh, in Atlanta for the SEC championship game is such a, such a big deal. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and uh, probably, like I said, the, uh, maybe, maybe with, with the exception of the national championship game and I, now, the, now the playoffs, but, but even before, I mean, this was, was always the biggest game of the year in college football. And uh, uh, so, you know, the opportunity to go out there, play to, you know, I think you got to go out there. Uh, enjoy the moment. You got to be a guy that wants to play in big games and be on big stages. And, uh, you know, I know our guys do. And so I think that's where the the excitement comes from is these guys, they've worked for this opportunity and they want the opportunity to go play on this stage. We have a few more minutes with Coach Mullen. If you have a question, please use the raised hand function. Uh, we'll go back uh, to Steve Mullen. Steve. Sorry about that. Here we go, Steve. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, Coach, with um, the National Signing Day in the rearview mirror, getting ready for an SEC championship game, no less, how difficult was that to juggle this week? <laughs> it was uh... – it was, it was, I mean, it was, uh, it was different. I'll tell you that it was different. Uh, you know, your mind racing, you're not getting a whole lot of sleep. Uh, just trying to go through every scenario. I was talking to, talking to one of the guys, uh, one of my friends, um, in the NFL and I, and I said, Hey, uh, imagine, imagine playing like the NFC championship game, uh, you know, the week of the draft and, uh, <laughs> like, you gotta be kidding me. And, uh, so uh, it was a unique challenge this year, but this year has brought so many different unique challenges. And I think it's just, uh, you've kind of learned to, uh, to adjust to them, uh, find the best way to adjust, maybe try to create new ways to think. Uh, and, you know, sometimes just kind of work your tail off and, and uh, you know, uh, I guess maybe we got, we got, we were able to get a little bit more sleep when we were shut down and uh, uh, last spring um, than you normally would with missing spring practice. And we're making up for that time now of, not getting any of it, making sure you're prepared to get everything done. We'll go now, Coach, to Nick De La Torre. Nick? Hey, Coach. You talked about just the magnitude of this game. Obviously, Alabama's been there a bunch. How do you handle um, your guys? Is it like through walkthrough on, on Friday or, or on Saturday morning and just like, hey, take it in now, be nervous now, um, and, and not kind of get lost in the moment of how big the stage is? Uh, I mean, we're going to do our regular routine, you know, uh, that's, I mean, these guys came to Florida to play in this game. So I think, you know, we're, we've talked about, make sure you enjoy it, but, but we're, you know, uh, enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the experience, but, you know, understand this is why you came here, not just to play in this game, to go win this game. So, um, you know, I mean, that's kind of, that's been our approach all week of, uh, you know, very regular, regular game week. And, uh, but, you know, make sure, make sure you enjoy it, but understand that the purpose is, is we're here to win the game. Which we'll now go to David Waters of WJXT. Go ahead, David. Coach, uh, you had a shuffle on the offensive line last week. Is that something that continues in prep for Alabama the, this late in the season? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it happened because we, so, we had a bunch of injuries. So, you know, I mean, we had injuries, and uh, that hurt our depth. And uh, now that our depth's back uh, a little bit, we're a little bit healthier on the offensive line. It allows us to do that. Okay, Coach, we'll go back to Cassidy Hill. Cassidy? Can you hear me now? Yep. Go ahead, Cassidy. Were you surprised at all that you only dropped one spot to number seven in the playoff poll, or do you think that was a testament to playing all the games, which is something you had talked about before? I'm not in the room, so that'd be a question for, for all of them. I think, uh, you know, I think it, it, it showed respect. Uh, for us and, and for this league and the, uh, the qualities of the, the opponents in this league and the, uh, the, the, the grind and the demand of playing a, a, a 10, this is our 11th SEC game in a season. Uh, I think that's certainly a challenge. And, uh, you know, there's uh, other conferences haven't been through that, you know? Uh, so the, uh, 
you know, I, I, that would be my guess or my, I might guess of it. I'm not on the committee, so that'd be a question for them. Uh, but I think it, it shows some of the, the respect for the guys, you know, going out there and, and trying to play. I mean, obviously, uh, I'm not knocking other, other teams or other schools, you know, but a team that, that is, played, you know, on game number six or game number seven uh, is, is going to be fresher, healthier uh, at, at this late in the season, uh, probably have more depth and be, you know, than a team that's on game 11 that, uh, you know, is, you know, is, is trying to have to walk through early in the week because guys aren't, aren't ready. Guys are banged up. You're, you're trying to keep everybody healthy. So, um, you know, I think everybody that, that knows the game of football understands that, you know, people that really know the game of football understand that. And that would be my, I, I, that would be my guess. I don't know. That, that'd be a question for the committee. All right. We'll go back to uh, Gene Fournette. Gene? Can you hear me? Um, could you uh, – obviously, a two-loss team has never – can you hear me? I got you. Okay. A two-loss team has never made the college football playoff. And obviously, uh, with, with, with your second loss but, – but if you go ahead and win the SEC title – uh, do you feel like like there should be any question about whether you should be in the playoff, even though it would be unprecedented for a two loss team to get there? We'll think about that on Saturday night after we win. Um, I think LSU made it in there, but when there was only two teams with two losses. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, does that sound about right? Back in one of those years with the BCS. So I thought they had two losses and made it. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm off on that one. So. But let's see. Uh, let's let's worry. We'll worry about winning on Saturday night because that's all we can control. And uh, you know, and what happens after that, we'll see what happens next. Right, Coach, we'll go back to Ren Wallace. Ren, Coach, this is uh, Ron Wallace with Balling Down South. Just before I ask, I say this, ask you this question. Good luck this weekend. But how will you expect your your defense to match up against that that offense that at Alabama? Well, I mean, you got to be, you got to be sound. You got to, you know, be assignment sound. They got a lot of weapons all over the field. They got weapons in the pass game. They got weapons in the run game. And, um, you know, I mean, so you, you got to be sound, understand your scheme. And then you got to have 11 guys running the ball as hard as you sing, you can every single play. Uh, they're going to make plays. You know, you just, uh, you can't worry about the play before you just worry about the next play and, uh, and being sound on that next play, uh, you know, and, and, and force them to have to execute for an entire game. Okay, hey, we'll go back to Steve Moulton. Steve? Uh, Coach, uh, you mentioned strength of schedule earlier in the season on being a, an important factor in a team's ranking. Uh, with that being said, does the SEC champion deserve to be in the Final Four? It would be hard to say that the SEC champion doesn't. Uh, you know, I mean, this, this is our third top ten game of the year. Um, this is Alabama's third top ten game of the year. Um, uh, you know, off current rankings. And so, um, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know other people that have on game number three of top 10 teams and, um, uh, in other leagues. So I guess it'd be hard to say, but again, I'm not on the committee. So that would be a question for them. We'll go back to Cassidy. Cassidy, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize my hand was still up. Actually, I do have a question though. Oh, I got something. Um, your first season, we saw some new new looks when you got to that Peach Bowl versus Michigan. You know, some of like the, the jet sweeps with KT that we had not really seen before but are now a staple. Without giving away your game plan, is Saturday an opportunity to really sort of open the playbook up and show stuff that nobody has maybe seen before on tape? Yeah, we're going to go back and, you know, I'm going back, kind of put in some of the, uh, the wishbone stuff we did. Uh, Back in 2010. You promised that the other day and didn't deliver. <laughs> I got to keep you on your toes. So, um, no, I mean, you know, I think sometimes when you have a bowl game, you have a little bit more time to, to kind of prepare and experiment with some new things. And some of those are things you're looking at long term into the future. Because, uh, you know, I mean, in a normal year in a bowl game, a lot of times you have three, four, four weeks to prepare. Uh, so you kind of – part of your practice is experimenting of things you want to look at in the future, and then you incorporate them to get a look at them into a game. So this has been much more of just a regular game. Thank Coach Mullen. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Go Gators.